Hi everyone, this is Lynn and welcome back to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing a really simple baby card for a baby boy using the Sending Hugs from Avery L, the Timeless Frames Mini Slimline from Crafty Meraki and the Essential Alphabet Dye from Newton Snook. You can find all of these amazing products at Crafty Meraki and I just... I had these products for a while now except of course for the newly released mini slimline from the last release from Crafty Meraki. Um, but those other products, I have them for a while now. I love them, I haven't used them enough, so today I'm changing that by making this baby card. So first of all, I sent this image from the Sending Hugs from Avery L onto Transitive Perfect Coloring Paper using the No Line Coloring Ink from Inkon 3. And I'm going to color this sheep um, in blues. Why? Well, it's going to be a baby boy's card and well blue isn't only for boys I know but uh, for baby cards I really just love using pinks and blues and I just decided that this was going to be a baby boy's card and um, I also could have colored the sheep in like regular colors it would have worked as well but I just love going all the way blue or all the way pink when creating a baby card so therefore I decided to go all out there with the blue. So the Copics that I'm using today are really limited. There are only four markers for this sheep and I'm just using all of the markers on the skin sort of area and then I'm using the lightest ones for the fluffy area. So as you know me, I personally prefer coloring from darkest to lightest, but there are many ways to copy color or color with your alcohol markers in general and you should do you, do whatever feels comfortable and whatever gives you the end result that you like. So for me it's from darkest to lightest and I just keep going back and forth. Also depending on the paper you're using, you will probably know that a certain amount of layers will help you with that blend that you like. For me with this paper it's most of the time two layers, however this blue combination there is quite a lot of contrast between the lightest colors and the darkest, so from time to time I need to add more layers. But no worries, this paper can handle that, so I just keep adding layers until I'm happy with the blend and the end result that I got. Also before starting on the coloring I just added the eyes and the mouth uh, using a Copic Multiliner. Why? Because this is a fabulous ink to get that no line coloring result. However, with Copic markers I find that sometimes I lose the placement of the details and you can always add them afterwards. But I really like placement how the illustrator had it intended and from time to time it's just hard to figure it out. So therefore I bought this Copic multiliner to do it ahead of time. However, I think it's best to heat set it before actually starting. Um, for some reason I had a bit of smudging, it wasn't a lot, but once it was die cut I just thought I will fix it a bit and I took a scent eraser, you will see it later on. Uh, but normally I heat set it, I just was too excited to wait for that and just take that heat gun. Um, so I went <laughs> on with the coloring and well that happened, so you can try to fix it if it works that's fine, if it doesn't work you can always redo it of course, however that's really unfortunate. So I would just suggest to heat set it just for a few seconds and that will already get you a long way. Now for the fluffy area of the belly there is quite a large area, um, so I just decided to add a bit of those swirly lines in the middle as well to give it that fluffy feel. On the top however, um, on the head I, I found that the image was already fluffy enough and there wasn't a large area uh, that would have been white otherwise so therefore I didn't add it over there. Also doing a second layer until I'm happy with it. And then for the ears I first thought of doing it pink like always but then I was like no, I mean the, the blue ID here so I just went on with those lighter colors as well. So just making sure that I like the blend. As you can see this is already which layer? I don't know, I didn't count but it's way more than two. 
So if I just need that, then I'm just adding that. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to die cut it using the matching dies. And then we can move on to the card. Well, actually, after die cutting, I decided to embellish it a bit. Embellishing as in just adding a bit of a black glaze pen and also some white jelly roll pen on the face area. But as I said, here I'm just really softly fixing the smudging that I got. Um, and then I'm going over with my lightest marker. I didn't went all the way with the sand eraser. I didn't want to damage the paper too much. Uh, so I just went really softly and then finished it with a new layer of that soft blue combination. Then a bit of black clay spin on the eyes. And then I added three dots on the cheeks of the sheep. And that is my cute little image. I just love it. So let's continue with the rest of the card. As I said, I'm using the Timeless Frames Mini Slimline, which is an incredible basic by Crafty Meraki. I think if you love Mini Slimline dies, you will love this one and you will need it. <laughs> then for on the back, I decided to use my favorite pattern paper, Petite Kingdom, from my favorite things. Um, I also use it on my last card. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just an incredible paper and it's a subtle background. I I wanted it to be a really soft background, but still have something more than just white because I wanted my frame to be white. Now here I first contemplated about adding the letters white because I had that gorgeous background paper and then the letters would match with the frame. However, I decided that I wanted more color, so I ended up coloring the letters using the blue markers as I used on the sheep. Now first I thought doing the second darkest color, then I thought I will do a gradient between the darkest and the second darkest, and then I ended up doing just the darkest marker. So it was all about testing and seeing what I liked and what I disliked, and in the end I just wanted a plain dark blue that would refer to the sheep. So once I colored all of the letters I had all of the elements ready and I could assemble the card. So I will first be adding the frame on top of my pattern paper. I'm trying to align it as straight as possible. The beauty about the pattern paper is that it's with like straight lines and you can sort of guide yourself with those and make sure that your frame is straight with the background pattern paper. Next, I tucked in the sheep just behind the frame on the right corner here and press it down. And then it was time to lay out that sentiment. Check whether I was happy with placement and then I could glue all of the letters down. I decided to glue the letters using some liquid glue, which is a quite flat card, but then before thinking that I wasn't going to add any dimension, I decided to add this whole panel once everything was adhered with some Scotch 3M foam tape on the top of my card base. So this way I had a bit of dimension, but as you can see here everything is flat. I could also have glued the frame with a bit of dimension and then have the sheep a bit higher up as well and then I would have the sentiment flat down like now. Um, but just because the pattern papers, I don't know if um, you are aware, and I think it's, it's well, it's a bit of a shame, but we are used to 6x6 six six paper pads, and I have many of those, and I love all the pattern papers that I have. Um, but the mini slimline dies are 6 and a quarter inch. I, I cannot really count in inches, but I think it's that. So actually the pattern papers that I have are just... A tiny bit too small and because of that I don't have the full coverage of my mini slimline dies so therefore I decided to avoid doing the dimension when adhering the frame on top of this pattern paper. So now onto the embellishments many possibilities but I decided to use these droplets pull hearts from little things from Lucy's cards and I'm just going to add a few one on the sheep, I thought it was a nice accent, and then a few all around the sentiment. 
So after playing with placements, once I was happy, I could adhere them using some liquid glue. Something that is really handy to have is some sort of an embellishment wand or a quick stick tool to help you get those adorable cute embellishments in place. So once I added those, I could adhere this panel on top of a mini slimline card base. And as I said previously, I'm going to use some Scotch 3M foam tape to do that. Now I'm one of those crafters that is completely backing the back of my panels, or as much as possible, um, just to help them through mailing. Um, I had some incredible cards by some of my fabulous crafty friends that arrived and unfortunately with all the cards and all the packages that are shipped um, they were creased and I found that such a shame because of all the effort that I know that everyone puts into it so just to avoid that and to avoid that people get my cards that are uh, ripped or just creased or anything like that I, I tend to cover everything it's not necessary uh, but well I, I rather be sure as final detail for this card I decided to add glossy accents all over the letters as well as on the nose of the sheep it was a lot of glossy accents but I really really like how it turned out dry um, Whenever I can, I add glossy accents to letters. I think it just makes them jump off of the card and I just love it. So that is my card and the whole process of the making of this card. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you liked the end result. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like the card, you can always give this video a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. I want to thank you all for stopping by and I wish you all a fabulous day. Bye!